Hi, my name is uh, Richard Tavele. I'm the general manager from Royal Logic. Um, Royal Logic is a uh, consultancy firm. We develop uh, custom IP and custom solutions for, uh, uh, for our customers. Ever since we were incorporated in 2014, we've been working um, with and for uh, RISC-V. So we've developed our own RISC-V uh, CPU cores. We've been heavily involved in the debug uh, module and the debug unit. And we delivered uh, Eclipse plugins for uh, software development. Um, today, I want to talk about um, a practical implementation of the interrupt controller. So we heard some great talks about the CPUs, um, but we, de we decided to um, focus our talk on, uh, on the sub-blocks, in this case, the interrupt controller. So the goal for designing our interrupt controller was to be fully compliant with the spec as it's uh, defined in the, in the privilege le level spec and make, a, um, make it easy to integrate different, kind, different bus uh, uh, structures. But also to make it very flexible. So you should be able to, uh, to specify the, the number of targets, the number of sources, um, all the options that you want. And um, it should work in uh, small micro, uh, embedded microcontroller systems all the way up to um, large uh, server system applications. Now, um, all this flexibility um, then uh, results, uh, it creates issues. So first of all, um, this is a little bit a view of the design hierarchy. Uh, hierarchy. In the center, you can see the plague core. Uh, we pretty much implemented um, the plague as specified in the, in the spec. We, we made some changes, and I'll talk about those later. Um, the, the core requires a number of uh, configuration uh, uh, signals. Those come from the, the register interface. And then the small block on the left is the bus interface, which is very flexible. You can swap out different bus uh, uh, systems as you want. The IP is fully parameterized, so you can, you can, you can specify the number of sources, the number of targets, um, the priority levels, um, whether or not it's, uh, it's got the thresholds and configuration registers. All of that is uh, uh, parameterized. Now, with all that flexibility comes a, comes a challenge, um, a design management challenge. Um, we've run a number of tests, and um, if you uh, would uh, naively implement the plague, um, the memory map can grow really, really uh, big, from a few hundreds to a few thousands uh, of registers that need to be mapped into your, uh, into your memory map. Um, the, uh, the complexity um, involved makes it hard to reuse the same code for, for different implementations. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, keeping track of all the changes and documenting this in your, uh, in your data sheets uh, becomes an issue as well. But the, the goals in, the, in defining this, uh, in, in defining the, the, the plague and the management interface, was to keep the memory map as small as possible, to maintain an intuitive and logical arrangement of the registers, and um, to avoid uh, the need for manual changes to the, uh, to the register interface. Uh, the solution to that, uh, to that problem was to create the, the memory map and the registers dynamically. So based on the parameters you give to the core, the, the IP core actually uh, dynamically builds uh, the register and the memory, the registers in the memory map. Um, this uh, means that it automatically um, creates the most, the minimum set of, of, of memory map, but also a practical look uh, um, practical arrangements of the, uh, of the registers. And as an addition, it automates the documentation of the memory map, and there's a few uh, examples. Um, we made some changes to the, uh, to the plague um, uh, to reduce the number of, of, uh, of uh, memory locations required. We decided to pack priority, uh, so the priority level per, per interrupt on nibble boundaries, and. Uh, uh, to reduce that, that size, and we changed the way the, I, the ID claim and complete uh, steps work. So um, in our implementation, as soon as a target gets notified that uh, an interrupt is, uh, is pending, it reads the uh, ID register, it reads its ID register, which then automatically uh, sets the claim as well. So as soon as the as a target reads ID, it, auto, uh, it also claims that particular, uh, uh, particular interrupt. The ID register is then, uh, contrary to what the spec says, 
uh, automatically updated to show the next uh, pending interrupt. And then uh, when the ISR is ready, um, writing to the ID register, which is a dummy write, will actually uh, uh, indicate that the interrupt is complete. It can then immediately read ID again to get the next pending interrupt. And if there's no interrupt pending, it reads a zero. Now we've got a couple of uh, examples here. Uh, only uh, we've got two examples. Um, in this case, the example is for a small embedded system uh, with two targets, for example, an M mode and a U mode. Um, 16 priority levels. This is for a 32-bit, 32-bit uh, uh, interface bus. And you can see that um, during a simulation, it prints the memory map uh, for, the, for the play. Um, this is actually the, the report that uh, gets printed during the test bench. And you can take this and immediately put this in your documentation. Now, if you uh, would generate a, a larger example, uh, for example, 64 interrupt sources, and we've seen customers that actually want more than 1,000 interrupt sources as well, um, then it rearranges the memory map. Uh, in this case, it's for a 64-bit uh, data bus as well. So it automatically and dynamically adjusts all the, all the mapping. Now, all of this is ready. Uh, it's located on GitHub. Uh, documentation is there. It's BSD style licensed, so you can take it and use it in your, uh, uh, in your core. Any feedback, any, uh, any suggestions are, of course, very uh, welcomed. And um, we hope that you enjoy, uh, that you take this and enjoy using the core. That was my presentation.